standing. I fell asleep about four. I was going to move you to the couch. I saw her, John. What? I saw Charlene in my dream. She's calling me, John. She needs us. I know it. Dennis? You heard that Jamie and I tried to elope. Yeah, I can't believe that. I thought that you guys wanted a big church wedding. Well, we did. And, and you know, maybe we'll still have one. It's just I was beginning to feel so much pressure that, I don't know. Looks like we're still going to have our big church wedding, so. Well, hey, I'm sorry that your plans fell through. Story of my life. You know, it seems like every time I try to do something impulsive, it just it backfires on me. My sister Vicky never has any trouble. Yeah, let me tell you something. Your sister Vicky seemed to get herself into plenty of trouble. She's... She's made plenty of mistakes. She has had a lot of fun. I wish I knew what I was doing wrong. You know, it seems like you're trying to be impulsive in a, in a completely safe way. Yeah, you, you like, decide to be impulsive. Yes, I do. But well, you see, no. You need something to feel passionate about, something that drives you to extremes, whether you like it or not. I think you're speaking from experience. Well, to me, it's beautiful women and an open throttle on a race track. Oh, yeah, that's it. right. Um, Jamie told me that you like to race. Yeah, I also like to bet on the side. Do you lose much? Sometimes, but I enjoy the suspense. What about Jamie? I mean, what is it that drives him? I don't know. You should know better than I do. Well, you've known him longer than I have. And what is it that... That he finds attractive in a woman. Well, it seems to me like he's already found what he's attracted to. That's not what I meant. Dennis, I want to know about the other women in Jamie's life. What are you trying to pull? I'm trying to pull anything, Jamie. Oh, that would be a first. Would you try to be serious? Amanda's in danger here. What are you talking about? From Carl? I tried to warn you myself last night, but somebody let me have it before I could. Jake got beat up in the park. He was knocked out. What? Hold it. What does this have to do with Amanda? Carl was playing games with Kathleen again. I went to see him. I tried to stop him. Oh, brave, but not bright. I mean, I figured I'd handle them once I could do it again. What about Amanda? We got in a fight, and I, and I knocked a folder off of the desk, and there were some pictures of Amanda in it. Why? I don't know. I mean, the guy's got an obsession with beautiful women. He took money and kidnapped her. Oh. You think he's after Amanda now? I do. And I told him that. What did he say? He said that if he wanted you, he would have had you already. But Peg! He was thinking about packing up and taking some of his keepsakes with him. Oh, my God. I just thought you should know. Are you sure this isn't something you just dreamed up, Jake, so you could look like a hero? Jamie! Jamie! 
Jake's telling the truth. I think he is. This all makes sense. You better tell your mother what happened. I didn't want to believe this, but I guess um, now I have to. Carl tried to kidnap me the other day at Bravo. He was unconscious when you left him? No, 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 that's quite sufficient. Well, next time I'll think twice. And who does he think he is? He's not the family avenger. <laughs> Look, stop nattering. No one pays any attention to Jake McKinnon. Oh, you can, uh, you can expect a few more assignments from me before I bid you adieu. so real. Frank, I usually don't believe in this kind of stuff, but do you have any idea where she is? No. No, but, but I know she's alive. Is she all right? Is she alone? Is she in danger? I, I don't know any of that. I just know that she's out there. I called every hospital within 150 miles of here. Nothing? No, nothing. I also called your mother. I find it carefully so she won't panic. To do, Frankie. I called work, told him I wouldn't be in. Has Ryan been in touch? Yeah, the police don't have any leads. Who's Gregory? I'll take him over to my mother's. Did you tell the pirate? No. Frankie, I don't know what to do next. Have you eaten? No. Uh, I'm going to make you some breakfast. I don't want anything. You have got to eat, John. You've got to keep your strength up because Raleigh will kill me if I get sick. And all you've got to do is stay positive. How am I supposed to do that? You expect a miracle. You pray for one. Oh, Frankie, come on. Uh, look, John, look at me. I, I'm, I'm living proof. I was a goner, and here I am about to spam with some eggs, right? Frankie, I have prayed, but I'm also trying to be practical. Call the one person who might really know where Charlene is. Who would that be? I think you better talk to Jamie about this, not me. Oh, no, I have, I have. And he, he told me that he thinks his taste has matured. Well, there you go. There you have it. Come on, Dennis. Look, all right, it's common knowledge that Jamie's had a history of falling for wild women. How wild? Well, let's just say that back in the old days, Jamie and I were a lot more alike. You men are all alike, aren't you? Naturally. Excuse me for that. <clears throat> Dennis Wheeler. Hey, Rich, how you doing? Got any new cars for me? Oh, yeah? Hey, yeah, that's great. What? Hey, you're on. I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Car dealer? Yeah, he says he's got something that he thinks I might like. How fast would you know, something like that go? Uh, buck fifty, easily. You mean, 
And then there was a phone call just before she left. I can't help but think that she was set up. She said it was the wrong number. Was she covering something? I don't know. Well, maybe whoever it was told her to go down to Ruby's at the dinner. Why wouldn't she have told me? Because she was fixing a, a nice dinner. She was trying to make things comfortable for me and Cass. I'm sure she just didn't want us to worry. She just said she was going to the store. Mm-hmm. Picked up her bag and left like there was no problem. I should have insisted on going. Don't do that to yourself. Yeah, you didn't know. I did. That's not really true. She got halfway out the door and then she turned around and came back in. And she did. She kissed me. And her kiss was very different. John, it may feel that way now. You know, in hindsight, but it's not. all this? Ryan doesn't want to exclude the possibility that Charlene had a relapse. Charlie came up? I just don't believe that. I don't either. Well, we've got to consider every possibility. If Charlie did come back, she'd go straight to you, Grant. Yeah, I think she would. Is that what happened? No. Charlie's been gone a long time. Charlene was so happy with you and Gregory. I thought so. John, I ran into her when I was in the hospital and talked. You and Gregory were her whole world. There was no sign of Charlie. Are you sure? Positive. I knew that. I know the emptiness you can feel when the person you love's been taken away from you. Doesn't make any difference how it happened. The helplessness is terrible. I guess you would know something about that. Charlene would never turn her back on me. Or a child. This is something else. I know you and I have never been on the same side, Mike. But I'd like to help. If you don't mind, I'd like to call some friends at the FBI. I'd appreciate it. Who's coordinating the search? Ryan and Frankie has some local investigators asking questions. Yeah, we, we've made every call we can think of. Yeah, in case there was an accident. No leads. Not yet. I've got my staff sending Charlene's picture to just about every newspaper in the country. That's the start. Anything else comes up, please let me know. We will. Right. Thanks for coming by. Thank you, John. This is shaking him up, too. People don't just disappear. Especially not show. I know what this is. Taylor. John, Taylor Benson has been declared dead. They never found her body. She tried to do this once before. She tried to get everyone to believe. John, you're wrong. She's dead. You've got to believe me. It's Taylor. And she's got Charlene. Dennis, this car is incredible. Wait a minute. Car? This is not a car. This is an experience. What, what kind of experience? It's anything you want it to be. It's total freedom. It's life on the edge. It's beyond boundaries is what this is. I'm not entirely sure I'm leaving. Thanks. 
yourself in my hands. Trust me. Decoration mainly. Yeah, really, at 100 miles an hour, you don't have time to look at dials. You just sit back and relax. 100 miles an hour? Yeah, you know, racing is like making love. If you think about it too much, you're going to crash and burn. Um, what's, what's this? Fast cars, unlike fast women, give you a warning just before you're about to lose control. Dennis, <laughs> why do all your answers include making love? Well, because I was taught that you use familiar examples to explain new concepts. Is making love unfamiliar to you? <laughs> <laughs> ah, you really, you really enjoy shocking people, don't you? Well, hey, I don't like small talk. So I gather. Yeah. What's it like driving this fast? Oh, it's like, it's like you become one with a car. You can't try and drive it because you'll end up being a quarter of a mile behind. Yeah, I mean, but the world must just whiz yeah, right yeah, by you. Yeah, yeah, 140 miles an hour. It's like, yeah. all you can see is the, is the wind and then the sound of the engine. It's yeah, amazing. But, but, but then what, what happens at 150? That is what total passion is all about. Are you ready for it? As long as we keep it on the track. All right, let's go. From now on, no more secrets, okay? We have to protect each other. Deal. What would you have done if Sam hadn't been there? I don't know. I don't even think about that now. Listen, I have to go and talk to Hilda. I don't want the children out of this house by themselves. Thanks, Mom. How are your eyes? Fine, considering. I was afraid to tell you about this. With all the stress that you've been under and everything. What do you think would have happened if Carl had taken you away from us? Mom, what do you think we would have felt if the man that would, was going after you would have succeeded? All right, all right, let's not talk about this, all right? So how was last night? Fine, how was it with you? Did you and Sam talk about Olivia? Yeah, among other things. But how was your night with Michael? Oh, Michael was fine until Spencer arrived. They're jealous of each other? Oh, I don't know if they're jealous. Oh, yes, you do. You know they are. I think it's great. Well, I don't. They're very competitive. I don't like to be in the center of that. But you should. Spencer is very driven. He pushes his family too much. I don't like that. What about Michael? <sighs> Michael is a friend. I don't know if it's wise to take it any farther than that. I'm sure you'll make the right decision. Well, in the meantime, I have to get to Chicago and see that specialist. Does this mean that you're thinking about having the operation they suggested? Well, if he thinks it's a good idea, of course I will. Why? Are you worried about that? I, I just think under the circumstances with Carl lurking around, maybe we should Honey. put it off. If Carl is after you, I want to be in perfect health. That means I'll get that surgery if I need it. different perspective on life. I mean, I really felt when we were in there like I was running with the car. I yeah, I always, I always feel so free in there. All I can think about is staying alive, and I just feel it. I just love every minute. No, exactly. 
exactly what you mean. There's only one thing that compares okay, to that. Okay, okay, okay. I got the metaphor the first time around. <laughs> All right, fine. It's too bad that lovers can't be like race car drivers. We have to qualify before we go any further. Dennis, when you and Jamie were kids, did, did he always have to be the hero? I don't think that he played the hero or anything. I think that Jamie really enjoys helping people, and I, I believe that's why he's such a good doctor. He was right about you, you know. You are a very good friend. Thanks. Uh, I, um, I will never, <laughs> ever, <laughs> ever, ever forget this day, but, um, I have to get home. Well, why? What's the rush? The real world will wait. Sam, what a surprise. But you don't look very happy. I want the photos of Amanda. What photos? Don't play games with me, Carl. Just hand them over. I don't know what you're talking about. Do you want me to tear this place apart till I find them? Good heavens. <laughs> I think that paint thinner's begun to affect your brain. My best call, security. Jake saw the photo when he was here last night. I want it. Oh, oh Jake, Jake McKinnon, the light now dawns. No wonder you're a bit confused. Drop the act, Carl. I've been watching you watch Amanda for weeks. You know, it's said of you that you became a little paranoid when Amanda left you in favor of Evan Bates, but I hadn't... I wasn't aware. It was quite so serious. I'm not paranoid. I saw you forcing Amanda into your car last week. No, that's your fantasy. I'm the one who stopped you. Honestly, Jake McKinnon would do or say anything to turn people against me. Everybody's already against you, Carl. They don't need Jake. Well, but you have to admit that he's done his utmost to ingratiate himself, endear himself to the Corey household. And what better way than to uncover an alleged plot against Amanda? And who, who better to play the villain than I? There's only one problem, Sam. It's all fabricated. Then look me in the eye and tell me you're not interested in Amanda. You know, I don't have to answer to you. I mean, you come barging in here into my home, you make outrageous accusations, demands even. You can't do it. I think you've outstayed your welcome. Fine. I got what I came for. You are going to get what you deserve, Carl. Watch your back. The whole world's waiting for you to make a mistake. Quite a beating. I'm okay. I took him to the hospital this morning. The doctor said he was lucky he didn't break anything. Nobody asked you how you were. I'm sorry. No, no, Pauline took really good care of me. I'm very grateful for what you did, Jake. I felt for a long time Carlos after Amanda. Thank you for believing in me. You know, it might not have been easy. Thank you. Okay, you're all set. You have an appointment, and Dr. Newman is going to forward the files over there. Go ahead. Uh, to a specialist, MC. Here? In Chicago. You are taking security with you, aren't you? Yes, she is. One of the guards has already arrived, and he's waiting in the library. Well, then let's go talk to him. I don't want to frighten this doctor by arriving with men in suits and guns. He just might make his day. So, how are you really feeling? I'm sorry, but... Uh, but I'm not sorry that I went to see Carl. Well, it was very unlucky for Amanda that you did. <laughs> wow. For once, I'm really proud of you. Gee, thanks a bunch. I'm serious. It's time someone stood up to that monster. Hmm. I have to hand it to you. That was some performance you gave for your family there. What? What are you talking about? Sticking up for me. I never would have guessed it, especially since I dragged you away from Rayon last night. Carl, I understand. I don't know what I would have done if you hadn't shown up. Carl, 
comes up here. He doesn't have the guts to go after someone himself. He has to send goons after them after you and Rachel. Besides, you were telling the truth. Well, I'm glad you believe me. Jamie sure didn't jump down my throat with both feet to try to get out two words. You've got to stop fighting with Jamie. It's only going to make things worse. I can't help it, Paulina. He acts like everything I'm doing is some kind of con. Well? Hey, stop it, all right? Did you notice how I didn't bring up the fact that the brazen phone was found right next to you? I already told you that Carl did that to, to throw off the scent. Lone sharks like to look you right in the eyes right before they let you have it. You should know. I do. <laughs> hey, thanks for not bringing that up in front of everybody, all right? Well, I didn't think that particular detail would have convinced Jamie that you were in the love. You're right. That was very loyal. I didn't do it for you, Jake. I did it for Amanda. Now would that creep anywhere near her? What about that oil rub down Florence Nightingale? Was that for Amanda, too? Don't go crazy, Jake. I would have done that for any dog who was hurt as badly as you. Dog. 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 You know something? For just one minute, it actually seemed like I was a happily married man there. Well, that's as close as we're ever going to get. Fine by me. Hey, I just felt sorry for you, too. Don't make it any more than that. Yeah, well, I didn't do anything to make you feel sorry for me. Just drop it, okay? Great. Here. I'm here to see you. Well, things are kind of tense here, Red. Jake, would you give us a minute, please? You're here to see my wife again, Grant? I think the fundraiser is over. Jake, please. Stop it. I'll be upstairs. Why did you walk out on me last night? I looked around and you were gone. It couldn't be helped. You have to be with Jake, didn't you? Yes, but it's a little more complicated. Well, it always is with Jake. I meant to tell you I was leaving. I but you decided not to bother? No, it wasn't like that. You couldn't spare, what, two minutes just to say goodbye? Grant, I was in a rush. I couldn't get near you without looking obvious. Of course. You were concerned about my image, right? Actually, I was. You sure you weren't concerned about yourself? What? Mickey felt me in. <sighs> yeah, I bet you did. She was trying to help. Or something? Lies. Yes. Lies. So far, everything Vicky has said is proven correct. Brad, that woman has never been on my side. Hey, come on. Let's, let's not make this Vicky's fault. Fine, fine. Let's just forget about Vicky. Would you please just let me tell you what happened? I have a pretty good idea. Oh, you do? Once again, you had me right where you wanted me. I mean, the challenge was over, so you left. Grant, why are you saying this? You know I love you, not Jake. That's what you say to me. What do you say to him? Please. What's the matter? You can't answer. I refuse to be one of the men on your string. What? I'm tired of the game you're playing, Paulina. What game? It took me a long time to get it. You're nothing but a tease. And Frankie, maybe when we walk in there, he knows. He knows. John, you gotta be strong. You gotta be strong for him. Look, do you really think it's sure? I, I can't believe it's Taylor Benson. Sure, I a letter a couple of days ago. It's from Taylor. What? He gave it to Ryan. He took it down to the pre 
be sent to him and analyze. He's sure that it was written months ago. What did it say? She said that she wasn't finished with us. She wanted me and Gregory, and that Charlene was in the way. Thanks, Cass. I will tell Okay, that was Cass. He's hired some PIs to uh, check out some local motels and hotels. What about Waterford? Well, Ryan's got the cops working down there. Oh, those people aren't going to talk to cops. Which is why Cass has hired some less respectable-looking types to go show some photos around, see if anyone's talking. Let's hope they do. Yeah. Well, the thing is, John, he's not only showing pictures of Charlene, he's also showing some pictures of uh, Taylor Benson. Well, it looks like we're all thinking the same thing. If anyone has seen either of them, we're going to know about it. You say you love me, and then you call me that? I left you because I didn't want to hurt you ever. Why would I start playing games now? Vicky is filling your head with this stupid garbage. Your own husband told me the same thing. What did Jake say? That you moved in on Jamie. What? That's ridiculous. Jamie is a part of my family. And Jake's your husband. What does that make me? Another face in the crowd? No! Look, last night I told you I wanted us to be together more than anything in the world. Then I turn around and you're gone. What am I supposed to do? You're supposed to trust me. I tried that! Grant, Jake was beaten up last night. There's always something else, isn't there? I'm sorry. It's not going to be like this forever. I don't know how much more of this I can take. Grant, I love you. But we both know that we have to wait till after the election. The hell with the election! You don't mean that! I don't. No. I just saw John Hudson. He reminded me of how life can turn on a dime. I don't want to lose you. I don't want to be the woman who cost you a career. No other way, is there? Not now. Please, I just need more time. I left. I left the office without telling anybody where I was going. I promise you, Grant, I'll make it worth the wait, please. I said. Some terrible things, I'm sorry. It's okay. You were set up, we both were. My Jake, I will handle him and his lies. I don't know how much longer I can wait, Paul. Me neither. I'll call you, okay? I'm sorry. About what? Well, when Jake told us about Carl wanting Amanda, I didn't want to believe it. But what I mean, the thing is, I acted like a jerk. No, you didn't. But I still... I'm just a simple word that Jake says. I'm amazed anyone listened. Well, I'm glad they did for Amanda's sake. I don't know. I'm so worried about my mother and Marley. Maybe I'm just running out of patience. Why are you so worried about Marley? Is she still not feeling well? I don't think so. She's disappointed about having to discontinue her fertility treatment. Jamie, I wasn't going to say anything, but I think it's better now that you know. You know what? You still missing that prescription pad? Yeah. I saw it. In Marley's jacket. What? When I asked her why she had it, she accused me of trying to make trouble, so I let it go. I wasn't going to say anything until now, but... Helena, thank you. I'm glad you did. Thank you. husband been a little too far. Just playing my part, baby, kids. 
I bet you said I'm Jamie now, right? Isn't that what you told me? Oh, Jamie. Yeah. What, are you trying to make me out to be some kind of tramp? Well, I think the grant just misunderstood. <laughs> no, no. Well, then he's a liar. Grant wouldn't lie to me. So well, no, go ahead. What? Yeah, politicians are born liars. They say whatever they need to get whatever they want. It's not Grant. I just don't want to see it. You're trying to convince Grant that I've been unfaithful to him. Think again. You know something? I don't know why you're worried, because I'm sure that Grant hasn't exactly been a monk. You make me sick. Don't you even ever say his name again. You're the one that's talking about him, not me. But don't you ruin this for me. Jamie, it was the most incredible ride. How fast was Dennis driving? One buck fifty. I'll be 150 miles per hour. And you liked it? It was incredible. You know, Dennis said it makes you feel alive. Jamie. Well, honey, don't be mad at him. I mean, he knew what he was doing the whole time. Well, I'll bet he did. Why are you looking at me like that? I guess I'm just having a little trouble. Racing doesn't seem like your kind of thing, Molly. Why? Because I'm too uptight. Molly, come on. I never said that. I just thought for once I would try to do something impulsive. Okay. I mean, I thought you were attracted to impulsive women. I am attracted to you. Just the way that you are. All right. Safe, predictable. I wouldn't exactly say that. Why didn't you tell me you had my prescription pad? Mm. Marley, it was in your jacket. What are you accusing me of now? Can you explain that? Apparently you feel like I have to. Marley! I don't believe this, Jamie! Marley, get back here! It's the same gun. Yeah. Haven't you learned anything? That gun almost ruined both of our lives, Jake. It's not the gun that does the damage. I figured after yesterday I needed some protection. Come on, please. Hey, I need doesn't strike in the same place twice. You can joke about that today. Come on, what, what is going on? You weren't going to kill it. No, I didn't give it to exactly. you. Exactly. You were going to hate. Is done is done. It's not done. It won't be done. You won't let it shut up. Just shut up. I'm not gonna let go of you until you calm down. You look at us. Is that loaded? This is crazy. We're stupid now. You wait till the picture comes in, you run it with the missing person's copy, and look, run it until I tell you not to run it anymore. And I don't care how much it costs, just do it. Thank you. Look, I've got Charlene's picture and the missing person copy running in all the local papers and in every neighboring state. Okay, so what's next? John, I've got everyone in my office working on this. I know there's no stop for right you and Frankie. They called the hospital. We'll find you, man, I promise you that. With everyone we have working on it, we have to. Charlie makes people love her. Uh, yeah. Sure, just a minute. Right? Yes. 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 No, no, that's right. I'll be right there. The harbor master just called Cass. Windswept is on her way back into the harbor. Is Taylor aboard? If she is, we're going to find Charlene. 